or, uh, or the cloud, the funnel cloud itself, and they'll be able to triangulate uh, and, um, and they'll know how far away the tornado is and can actually compute uh, independently of the radar the speed of rotation about the outer uh, edges, uh, both the rotation and the upward motion in the outer edges of this tornado, which now is uh, potentially getting what we call rain wrapped. It seems to be perhaps getting more and more enshrouded in curtains of rain. Uh, Dr. Forbes, as we look at this storm, and I, now I can see as the outer bands of the supercell itself start to rotate, spiraling around us here, because I can now tell it's getting a lot closer to us. When I look at this storm and watch its movement toward us right now, it is getting closer. Is there going to be a point at which we're going to be in too much danger, and which way is going to be best for us to go? Should we go north, should we go south, or should we head maybe farther east? Well, uh, yes, definitely should go farther east. Uh, it, uh, and answer to your question, the, the latest warning has come out, uh, tornado warning now for Goshen and Laramie, parts of Goshen and Laramie counties, and they're indicating now the motion is uh, toward the uh, east at 25 miles per hour. Uh, and uh, so it has perhaps accelerated just a little bit now as that rain has come out and begun to push on it. Uh, so I would expect that what you would need to do would be to move east to keep ahead of it, perhaps move a little bit of so southward to keep out of the, the hail. There's some hail probably right behind this, this tornado. Of course, you'll be staying ahead of that, but there's a big curtain of, of rain and probably hail that are, are just about five miles or so to the north of the track. So you certainly would not want to go any to the north, go east to keep ahead of it and a little bit to the south. Dr. Forbes, this is almost completely obscured. I, mean, I can't even see the funnel anymore. It's completely obscured by rain. So now it becomes a very dangerous situation where you can't actually get a visual on where the vortex itself is. Yeah, absolutely. You can't tell if the tornado is still in there. It probably is still in there. But it is, what also could be happening is that rain-cooled air may be choking it off. Uh, but it still uh, seems as if there's some faint outline of a tornado in there, but you can see all these rain curtains on the edges uh, where, where the rain is not so heavy and obscuring that, uh, that this tornado has gotten enshrouded uh, in rain. The rear flank downdraft and its rain has wrapped around the west side, then the south side, and now it's gone all the way around to the east side uh, and, uh, of, of this uh, tornado. And that's part of what is a classic evolution of these supercell tornadoes, big wedge tornadoes like the one, there it is, you can see it again, it's still there. There's the tornado. Uh, and, and the best thing for Vortex 2 standpoint is they've caught the whole evolution of this. They've caught it before it had a tornado. They've caught the rear flank downdraft. Now they've caught a massive, Mike, a massive wedge tornado is back in that uh, partly enshrouded in rain. Dr. Fors, we are several miles away from this tornado. To my fairly untrained eye, when it comes to visually inspecting tornado, it does look very significant. It looks very large. I know you've been basically watching the video the entire time. Is there any way to tell on radar potentially how large of a tornado physically we have in diameter? Uh, I can probably at, probably at some point quick, uh, go quick and take a look at the radar, but I know we want the viewers to keep seeing the tornado. But just looking at this, I would certainly expect this tornado uh, from visual look, uh, appearance here to be a quarter mile wide. This looks to be a very large tornado. If you're two miles away, uh, this is a big tornado. When I look at what could be in the potential path of this storm, Dr. Forbes, I see very little. What I do see, though, uh, from here between where we are and where the tornado is, I see a lot of high tension power lines. So I suspect that wherever these lines go, we're going to see some power outages and what's oftentimes uh, described by uh, storm chasers as spectacular are those, those flashes of power going out as the tornado actually passes over them. Yeah, absolutely. And you're certainly going to want to be away from that uh, power line uh, that we just saw there. Oh, there's the there's the high tension one. So several uh, types of power lines. Yeah, we're basically right under some. So we're probably not in that safe a spot to be as the tornado gets closer. We'll actually have to probably head at least south on this roadway because we're on a north south road right now. But looking at this tornado, we watched. I believe three funnels come down, then one tornado, a little rope tornado come down, lift, and now we've got what looks to be, <laughs> Dr. Forbes, a massive wedge tornado right now, and as you were alluding to, a classic, 
classic sampling for Vortex 2. When, when I look at things like the probes, Dr. Forbes, these are the very low to the ground probes that they want to put directly in the path of the tornado. They don't sit more than about three feet off the ground. What is the advantage of getting data that is that close to the ground when a tornado passes over it? Well, that's uh, be, the, the Doppler radars themselves, because of uh, obstructions, they typically can only uh, see uh, up to about uh, 15 or perhaps more like 50 feet above ground. So about the only way that we get any measurements in those lowest 10 feet of the tornado is by having these surface measurements. The Doppler radar has to aim just a little bit above the ground to avoid all the, 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 the ground clutter. And so uh, the best measurements would be to have uh, the pods or, or the stick nets measuring the, the winds in the tornado as it comes right over them. Dr. Forbes, interesting that you mentioned that because look who's just pulled up here. This is the team from Texas Tech. They're the ones with the stick nets. Uh, they're about to do a, de a deployment right now. It looks like they're probably deploying in a north-south fashion here as the storm moves its way uh, slightly south of east. And so what they're going to do with these probes, is they're going to put them on the uh, east side of the road here and away from the power lines. What they're going to do here is deploy. As they deploy, it takes them about two minutes or so. What they're doing is setting up uh, the stick nets they'll stake them into the ground they've got a computer that'll measure all the data wind speed it'll measure barometric pressure it'll measure uh, temperature and humidity and so what they're doing right now is deploying this stick net in anticipation that at least portions of this storm will come over them when this is hooked up they basically then hightail it out of here to stay safe and then come back and gather the data from this stick net so what you're looking at right here is tanya and mike uh, with the texas tech and university of michigan stick net team so they're hooking up as quickly as possible because what they do now is Scotch, and they'll set up these in a line down this roadway in hopes that the tornado itself or at least the outskirts of the tornado will pass through several portions of their deployment here Dr. Forbes. Yeah and I uh, while you were showing that I ran over and looked at the uh, our 3D radar and indeed that radar shows uh, the rain area that's been hiding in behind the tornado there it shows the our Doppler radar uh, shows a, a big wide donut and then as, as we've been seeing, the tornado is right inside that donut. So uh, the, uh, the left and right sides of the donut correspond to the rain, and then the tornado is right in the middle of the donut. At, at some point, if, if it stops producing a tornado, we'll, we'll show some of that. But I, I know we want to want to see all of the uh, the ongoing excitement here by the Vortex 2 team. There it is. There's I'm the little donut Tanya that I was talking about. How many more deployments are you doing? Are you going south, Tanya? Yes, we are going south. Five more left in our trailer. They are going south, the new, and what's the spacing? Two and a half miles uh, separating each stick net as they'll head south now, Dr. Forbes, and uh, probably a good plan because it looks like, at least on the radar, that it is now uh, turning south, at least south of our location, and you can see what a visual right now on this tornado. I mean, it is amazing. We've got a large wedge tornado on the ground, and obviously the teams are hustling. They are running to get these things in place because what they want to do is get them down. They can measure the pre-storm environment, the storm, envir storm environment itself, and maybe even the tornado, and then the post storm environment. They are placing these about two miles apart, so they're racing now farther south. They've still got five to go. They've put more up the street farther north so they can get an entire picture of this storm. But right now, obviously, an incredible storm, Dr. Forbes. This has been on the ground for some time now, and a large wedge tornado, you say, probably has significant width to it. Absolutely, and, and it's just a classic. You can see here a little band revolving around. That's the rear flank downdraft. Uh, the tornado uh, precipitation behind it. It's very, very impressive from a, a storm perspective that this tornado can continue to be this large uh, with that much rain very close to it. Uh, and so this is going to be a, an extremely interesting data set to help test some of those Vortex 2 hypotheses. Uh, and that part of the critical information for that is going to be what's the temperature in that downdraft. So some of the stick nets that have been deployed a bit farther to the west and now the ones that it is, they're going to run over will give that temperature of the downdraft. Was it just the right temperature? We've talked about it has, it's like the three bears in the porridge. The downdraft can't be too cold. It can't be too warm. It has to be just right. Is that theory going to be verified in this data set? When I look at, um, I, I see off just to the left of this tornado, Dr. Forrest, which looks to be some structures, potentially some har farmhouses here. Certainly worried about what can happen with that, especially if it comes even more slightly south. But ideally, 
This is perfect. This is an unpopulated area. It's very flat terrain, and this funnel is just, I mean, this tornado itself is, is truly incredible. And from our vantage point now, as it gets closer, you can even see the rotation of the rain bands outside of the tornado itself. This is a very, very powerful storm. Yes, indeed it is. It, this supercell, you can just see the spiraling hook shape on radar. Mike was pointing.